Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store. And last week I made a video that I really didn't expect to be that popular. Soprano ukuleles, uh, 10 of the world's best. Something that I don't make very often because the market for soprano ukuleles is so much smaller than that of the concert and tenor size. And I wanted to make a similar video, the same kind of concept today for the concerts, but I actually got very stuck because there are way more than 10 of the best in the world concert ukuleles out there. It's unfair to pick 10 and put them on a pedestal because the market in 2021 as I film this is so much better than it was just 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago. And what's happened is, uh, if you're a beginner, the quality has improved. If you're an intermediate, the quality has improved. And at the high end, there are more brands emerging as uh, competitors and alternative options to the more established Hawaiian or Japanese brands. So that video is just too hard to make. You, you can't unpack it. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to focus on 10 slightly overlooked concert ukuleles, perhaps new releases, things that I've wanted to talk about for a while and not really had the chance to. A couple of old favours, uh, favourites are peppered in there because many people ask for the same ukes to be compared. And hopefully by the time we come out of this, would have looked at a broad range of, of 10 ukuleles under a thousand pound starting around a hundred ending around a thousand and we'll really see what you get for your money uh, please do like the video subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah le leave a comment just letting everyone know at the end which was your favorite the first you can look at today is the flight duc 450 uh, i can't wait to show it off for you now Okay, the first ukulele we look at today is a uke that I've really wanted to feature for a while. Something from Flight at the beginner's end. This is the Flight DUC450, which is a laminate mango concert ukulele. Uh, this ukulele is not new as such, but it's certainly something that hasn't been featured here at the Southern Ukulele Store for very long. And this, along with the soprano version, the DUS450, have really, really impressed us. They are a very thin, uh, kind of lightweight laminate mango with satin finish. Some nice figuring on each one with uh, some accents in walnut. So you've got walnut front binding, walnut back binding, and a walnut rosette along with a walnut over uh, walnut fingerboard and bridge uh, you also have a walnut fingerboard and bridge with these really cool kind of split parallelogram gibson style um inlays going all the way up the fingerboard there and then you have a mango face plate at the headstock too with uh, close back gold tuners with black buttons it's got 35 mil nut width and it comes with a gig bag uh, a real bargain for well under 150 pound i think i would really struggle to pick between this and the kci i'm sorry the kai kci 30 for kind of best value beginners ukulele right now but this is definitely worth your attention if you're looking to dip a toe into the world of concert ukuleles this is the duc 450 let's give it a play Next up today, we're going to look at something that disappeared for a couple of years before making a triumphant return. This is the Ohana CK70R. Now, the CK70R uh, originally came out in the kind of 2015-2016 time, but then the CITES restrictions on Rosewood meant that for a few years it was very, very difficult for us to get this model. Ohana would not export it out of the US for kind of just paperwork reasons. It became very difficult to do that and made uh, more affordable instruments very costly thankfully in 2021 those restrictions have been lifted and this model is back in the ohana catalog has a solid spruce top with laminate rosewood back and sides and as you can see the front and back are tied together with some really nice cream binding uh, this ukulele is uh, loosely inspired by the martin triple o 28 a very famous guitar from the 1930s and uh, Ohana do a very, very good job of copying uh, Martin uh, style instruments. Uh, this is just the latest example uh, in a long line of very good vintage style uh, ukuleles. This obviously being based originally on a guitar, it has a more 
uh, the pairing of wood gives it much more projection. It's a very bright, very pokey, very in-your-face sounding ukulele. All of these things sound like buzzwords and slightly negative, but as you'll hear, it just makes for a clear and very transparent experience when you play it. It also has a slotted headstock, which is quite a rare feature on a concert ukulele with the reduced Ohana logo, one of the kind of more um, sort of scaled back things there with open back tuners and a 35 mil nut width. But one thing I like about this is it has this kind of scoop going into the first position. So if you're playing with your thumb kind of guiding you into position for the first point, you're gonna naturally hit that um, but it's a smooth edge, so you're going to find where you need to be without looking a bit easier. You do have side dots on this model, as many of you ask for, uh, with a rosewood fingerboard and bridge. And yeah, just there's nothing really not to like here. You even get a tiny abalone rosette around there too. Yeah, the CK70R has been uh, kind of one of my kind of go-to ukuleles to recommend to people, uh, students and customers alike for the last few years. Uh, great choice under £200. Let's give it a play and see what you think. Okay, next up today we have another new flight model. Uh, not a model that we did until very, very recently at the Southern Ukulele Store, but one that reminds me very much of the early Anui Nui ukuleles we used to do before they went all big time and made the UT200. Uh, back in the day they used to make some fantastic uh, slightly scaled back models like this. Uh, this is the Flight Juliana concert. Uh, why the Juliana? Well, the Juliana is named after Flight's uh, incredible one-woman army and evil overlord, Juliana, who uh, many of you will have seen on the social media for Flight already, as they're probably the most active brand in terms of social media and interaction with their players. Uh, the Juliana has a solid acacia top with laminate acacia back and sides. You do have uh, frontward binding there with a satin finish and just a very simple uh, laser etched rosette there in the top two. You have a 36mm nut width on this, so just slightly wider with a nice chunky neck. Although it has the 36mm nut width, the neck on this feels very similar to a Pono, just slightly more modern than some other ukuleles. And apart from that, it's, it's a very simple ukulele, it's not too flashy. You get some good closed back tuners on the back of the headstock there, but the satin finish gives the thing a lived in feel to it. Um, it even comes with a strap button fitted to the bottom and a gig bag too, so another bargain really in that under £200 price point for a uke. Uh, let's give the Juliana concert a play and see what you guys think. Okay, next up today we have what many regard as the best kept secret in the ukulele world. This is the Miller TM240. Calling something the best kept secret is a bold claim, but this ukulele really did blow me away. The first time they arrived, which was only a few months ago, back in January 2021, I picked one up and I played it, and I just assumed that it would be a 500 pound ukulele like the other Miller ukuleles uh, made of these solid woods. But no, this ukulele is a fraction of the price of many of the other glossed Miller models. It's very uncomplicated, it's unfussy, it's traditional, and it's just the perfect homage to the early Martins of this world. It has stylistic um, inspirations there that you can see from Kamaka. In fact, I did a a photo for social media about this video and one person guessed that this was a Kamaka HF2. If I did that, you could think it might be mahogany um, Kamaka or perhaps even a Koa Kamaka. It's just 
traditional Hawaiian in look, traditional um, Martin in sound, um, and affordable. It's a fantastic um, option against something like a Kawhi KTC One. Slightly chunkier in the build. You do get a 35 mil nut width with a slightly rounder neck. There is a Actually, I should explain the neck. You get C-shaped necks and U-shaped necks. This has a U-shaped neck, which means it has a slight flat point just on the back, which you can't pick up in the video. But hopefully on a close-up, if I do a profile down the neck, you'll see what I mean. So slight U point to the neck. Many people find these comfortable for barring because it gives your thumb um, a bit more of a flat surface to rest on. You have a rosewood fingerboard and bridge. And one thing I like about this model is it's one of the few ukuleles out there to come with black nylon strings. It's going for the traditional early ukulele sound and the strings complement that very, very well. I would add this ukulele to my own collection. If I was in the market for a concert or I wanted a ukulele that was you know, well under 500 pound, you know, you're talking around a three mark for this as I film this. Just something traditional, something warm, smoky something that would age nicely, this is a great choice. So let's give the TM240 a play and see what you think. I'm finding more and more as I make these videos that certain ukuleles come up and need to be compared more and more against each other. There are two ukes in particular that stick out because many people call up or email with uh, the request for something around £300, something with a solid top, preferably a spruce or a cedar top to give them a good solid finger picking sound. They like slotted headstocks, they like 35mm nuts there's usually these these reoccurring themes that more and more people are looking for uh, in the, it's the modern ukulele player and there are two ukulele brands that do these models and make very desirable instruments around this price so on my left you have the snail bhc 5t and on my right you have the flight voyager concert we're going to look at the snail first but at the end we're going to compare the sound samples one after the other to save you guys the trouble of skipping forward and back in the video so the first ukulele is the Snail BHC 5C, which is a solid spruce top with laminate ebony back and sides. You have an ebony fingerboard and bridge with the flower inlay on the fingerboard. You have a glossed mahogany neck with the slotted headstock, the Snail logo, which actually, looking at this video, looks very similar to the Ohana logo. It's kind of the Ohana logo turned sideways with uh, with black open back tuners, very modern feeling tuners, 35mm bone nut and saddle, and then snail you have that pull through bridge just to kind of close things on that particular model. And this ukulele has been popular for years, it was one of the first ukes I featured in a video on this channel and I think that the popularity from that, that video has now had, I mean 30, 40,000 views. So people are searching for this kind of thing all the time and the snail is an kind of oft found option there but you also have the flight voyager now the flight voyager is about 30 pound more than the snail and the difference between the two is that you get something that has a solid spruce top with an ebony fingerboard and bridge another simple rosette there and simple binding but you have solid acacia back and sides so that the acacia back and sides give the whole thing a slightly mellower slightly more tender sound than the laminate ebony the laminate ebony ukulele it's very um it pushes through in much the same way a rosewood back and sides would so the acacia is the mellower option but there are some features about the flight that for the extra 30 pound kind of makes sense as well this one has a pickup the double pickup so a a sound hole mounted volume and tone control uh, connected to an end pin jack socket so you would plug your lead into there you have the same kind of string through bridge on this model as you do on the snail and there's no fancy inlays just your standard mother of pearl inlays but you do get the flight slotted headstock which is a sleek kind of more modern european style headstock with i think probably the exact same tuners as the snail 
This has a 35 mil nut as well with a slightly deeper, so a slightly, the depth of the Voyager is just slightly thicker than the, the snail. Uh, but these two ukuleles, I totally understand why you compare them. I guess the other thing to note is that the flight has a comfort armrest, so it's a bit more comfortable. But you'll notice the body shapes of these two ukuleles are quite different. The snail is more traditional, a bit more curvy, and the Voyager is kind of like a scaled down tenor. But how does this affect the sound and which one sounds better to your ear? Let's uh, play the BHC 5T and then the Voyager and find out. So to summarize, the flight is heavier, like it weighs a lot more than the snail. It's a mellower sounding ukulele and the neck is a lot thicker. So if you want something a bit more streamlined and a bit more bouncy, I think the snail is a better option. If you want something that's got a bit more of a Hawaiian edge to it, this uh, Flight Voyager would be a good option. Okay, next up today, we've got something that I'm really excited to show you and something that I think many of you will kind of feel is one of the better ukuleles in the video today. This is the Ohana CK42. This is a limited edition model from Ohana because the wood involved in making it is limited edition wood. It's not something that's gonna be available on a reoccurring basis. This ukulele has a an Oregon Sinker Redwood top with solid rosewood back and sides. I think we should talk about the sinker wood first because not many people know what sinker wood means and it's kind of assumed by many people who make instruments uh, like this that you'll just hear a buzzword and you'll think, oh, that sounds good. But sinker wood has a fantastic story. Any kind of sinker wood is cool because if you think back a century, we were logging wood then. We were, we were harvesting wood for musical instruments and furniture and occasionally pieces of wood logs would be discarded or lost um, many of them ended up in the water and they would be left there because it was easier than getting them out. But as time goes by, in this case more than a century in Oregon, many woods have been uh, re-harvested from the water. So this is a century old piece of uh, redwood, uh, American redwood from Oregon. Uh, very similar tone wood to cedar, but texturally a more complex sound and a more complex look. It's, it's that kind of old growth wood thing against wood that's been kind of grown in captivity, if that makes any sense. It's worth more reading. If you're interested in wood, it's definitely worth researching sinker woods. So this sinker redwood top with the solid rosewood back and sides makes for an extremely loud, clear ukulele. I'm surprised we don't see more people out there using this wood combination because the, the redwood is very similar to cedar. It has a transparency and a warmth. It can't be replicated very well by other woods. Uh, and the reason you find different types of um, kind of cypress and cedar woods out there in circulation is because each one has such a distinctive character. For example, uh, Miller also used cypress, uh, Taiwanese cypress. They use yellow cypress and red cypress. A different wood to cedar, a different wood to redwood. Uh, but they all have that similar warmth and kind of personality. So this redwood top and rosewood back and sides make for a very modern, but also very warm and smoky character filled ukulele. You have uh, an oven coal fingerboard and bridge. This is one of the few Ohanas I've seen with that string through bridge. 
which is becoming more popular because there is a link between this kind of bridge and sustain. You tend to find ukuleles with this kind of bridge have a bit more bounce to them and a bit more poise when you play them. You have maple bindings on the front and back with the um, kind of sandwich purfling there of the of, of rosewood and maple for the rosette and the front binding too. And then finally at the headstock there you have the rope binding continued with open back gold tuners. Yeah, we're not going to see many CK42s. It's fun to be able to play one for the video today. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. So let's give it a play and see what you think. Okay, next up today, we're going to continue with that rope binding classical guitar Nunez theme that we've just looked at with the CK42. This is the Miller CD240W. This is a new ukulele to us here at SUS, uh, one that we no doubt will continue to stock for many years to come because it's a stunner. Many of you know I like Miller. I've purchased a Miller concert of my own around this kind of price point, but the wood pairing on this ukulele is just divine. It's a solid cedar top as opposed to the Cypress that we've seen on the TK240W in the past with Bolivian rosewood back and sides so a very chocolatey, almost light brown rosewood back and sides slightly less straight grain than Indian rosewood that we've just seen on, on the Ohana before and many other rosewood models a bit more textured to look at a bit more select to many people's eyes and ears you have the sandwich of maple, maple, maple and rosewood for the uh, for the binding there as well on the front and the rosette, and then you have an, uh, a rosewood fingerboard and bridge with the middle face plate, one of my favourite logos in in the world today, with gold open back tuners which uh, look to be uh, made by Dujung, a slightly kind of bigger cog and slightly bigger turn ratio than the Grovers and the stuff we've seen so far in this video. So yeah, I'm really excited to play this one as well. I think there's a, an argument to be made that these two ukuleles have a lot in common, but they're, so this is that Ohana CK42. Look at the slightly slimmer and slightly smaller proportions of that compared to the Miller, which is a chunk as we describe my uh, youngest son Rudy. This is a chunk of a ukulele for a concert. So let's give it a play and see what you think. Now, if that doesn't prove how different a redwood and a cedar top can be, then nothing will. We've got just two ukuleles to look at today, but they're both stunners, so stick around. This first one is the uh, number two in top 10 ukuleles of the year at SUS 2019 and part of the number one top ukuleles for 2020. This is the Snail S60C. I'm featuring this ukulele because you can't really have a top 10 list of ukuleles under a thousand pound without featuring this model when it's available. Um, please just assume if this ukulele is out of stock that we are desperately trying to get stock as are the other snail dealers out there around the world because it's a stunner. It's, it has this gorgeous huge abalone rosette on the body with figured acacia they say flamed acacia it's not always flame to look at but in this instance you get that flamed effect on the top back and sides 
the back on this is gorgeous it actually looks like a different wood altogether it looks like it could be um, ebony or zirakoti or something but it's acacia they have recently updated this model to have uh, a kind of i want to say like a sharp and pencil um binding on the back to tie the two sides together uh, and you do have paduk binding on the front and back with red and yellow uh, slithers of material going into the binding you have an ebony fingerboard and bridge with a 35 mil nut width um, someone asked me if the snail has side dots they are slightly harder to see in the light here against the red but they work very very well against the ukulele when you're looking at it and playing it slotted headstock with that uh, sideways uh, ohana just kidding <laughs> that sideways snail logo i really like that logo with the heart shaped tuners with the red buttons my son's favorite thing about this ukulele small small details there for you folks the s60c's also come in a, a really nice gray gig bag that's been updated for 2021 and uh, yeah finally you have the armrest the ebony armrest for comfort i uh, forgot to mention that in a previous video and somebody said to me why is the binding not finished why has nobody spotted that on a quality check um so yeah forgive me for not mentioning that on a previous video the s60c folks let's give this one a play and see what you think Okay, and the final ukulele we're going to look at today is, let's call it a one-off, because normally this ukulele would be a couple of hundred pounds more expensive than we're selling this particular one for. This is a Kanalea K1C DLX, so a Hawaiian-made Kanalea concert, all solid deluxe koa, deluxe being the second tier grade of koa that Kanalea use. It's a stunner all the way around. You have an ebony fingerboard and bridge with the Kanalea uh, mother of pearl headstock uh, inlay on an ebony face plate with gold gold open back tuners a 38 mil nut width so slightly chunkier neck suitable for somebody who's a slightly bigger player somebody with large hands or somebody that just needs a bit more string spacing between the strings and finally you have uh, mother of pearl uh, fret inlays going down the fingerboard and you're, you're probably asking, well, why is it reduced? Well, this particular model has been in stock with us since before Christmas. It's the last of the sort of kind of layer uh, priced at the 2020 prices. And um, we've just recently changed the strings for a customer who had it on hold and who's changed their mind. So this ukulele has the very first set of the Uke Logic um, Super Fluorocarbon uh, pink strings fitted to it for this sound sample which i think is a fantastic thing to to have uh, in the memory because normally canalairs come with aquilas and many people in the comments and uh, you know us here at sus included we're not a massive fan of the aquilas on uh, many canalair models sometimes you you find a uke turns up with those strings on it. it just sounds so good you don't want to change it but quite often we find ourselves sort of discussing changing the strings of a customer before we've even sent the ukulele so these pink fluorocarbon strings will be in stock with us at sus later in the year it's a fantastic way for us to end this video and introduce uh, something new that we're excited about at the same time so this is a Cunnelair K1C DLX serial number 23380 uh, from around yeah, December 2020. Let's give this one a play and see what you think.
there we have it folks we've looked at 10 concert ukuleles i want uh, a cool name for this video but i can't think what to call it and i don't want to kind of over egg the cake i was thinking something subtle like um 10 super awesome mega cool ukulele concert ukuleles under a thousand pounds something like that uh, let me know your suggestions for a future video in the comments section let us know which your favorite was in the comments section and also please do if you have your own experiences with any of these ukuleles say you've owned a flight duc 450 and you found that it it played particularly well at something then you know let us know it's always good for people in the market for these instruments to see real user feedback you can email me with any questions at alex at ukulele.co.uk or you can call one of the team on 01202 430820. I've no idea yet what next week's video is going to be, but I will be back very, very soon. Have a great day. Take care.